It's only game. Why you have to be mad? What is up, heroes of Dominion? My name is Charlie, this is Hero Wars Central, and in today's video, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite characters in all of Hero Wars, Faceless. Now, Faceless is a mage control hero, main stat intelligence, that is very mediocre when you look at his stat sheet. He does provide his own magic penetration, but we will find out that that really doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things. Uh, however, however, if you want probably the most utilitarian hero in the entire game, the most random at least, Faceless is your guy. Um, yeah, let's talk about Faceless more to get him. So on the mobile version of the game, the Highwayman shop, you can purchase Faceless's uh, soul stones for 500 Highwayman coins. You should be able to get enough every day to buy at least one of these three heroes, uh, Faceless, Cornelius, or Satori, uh, if not all three. So if, if you're looking to get heroes, uh, you know, Faceless might not, might not be a bad choice, depending on the team that you're trying to build. Uh, Cornelius and Satori are arguably um, competitive or, or, or more competitive heroes than Faceless. They all have their own teams, but this is how you get Faceless on mobile. On Facebook, it's the Friendship Shop. Uh, same kind of situation, except no Satori. Uh, Faceless Cornelius. I feel like you can get Friendship Coins significantly easier on Facebook than you can get Highwayman Coins on a mobile. So you should be able to buy both Faceless and Cornelius stones every day, uh, as well as you know, as well as buy items. You can see I have forty-seven thousand Friendship Coins, quite the total. So his skills are very unique. They are very unique. Uh, this doppelganger ability is kind of his, is kind of his uh, his go-to ability, his 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 most well-known ability, and the one that's the most random. This turns into the enemy or ally who last one used the ultimate skill and uses that skill. So if you are playing in auto mode, this is completely random based on when he has energy versus when another hero, including your opponents have energy so on on auto mode faceless might not be the best choice in some teams he is just by default <laughs> but in other teams you might want to think twice uh so the the trick with doppelganger that not a lot of people understand is that you copy the ability but you keep faceless's stats so if you copy a high physical attack ability but faceless doesn't have much physical attack then the skill isn't going to do that much damage right? It's better as a mage to copy a magical damage ability. So it, he, he excels on manual mode. And if you have a, uh, if you have a, a hero in your team whose ability that you want to duplicate every time, such as Kark, for example, Faceless Kark is a classic team combo. Then in manual mode, you can guarantee that Faceless copies Kark every single time. And Kark is unique uh, in that Kark's ultimate ability actually doesn't do any damage itself. It's, it's Kark's other abilities that do all the damage. So when Faceless copies that ultimate, it doesn't require any physical attack or magic attack or armor, magic penetration, anything. It doesn't require any stats. It just copies the ability, throws three enemies up into the air, um, and, and away you go. Another good option with Faceless is duplicating stuns with Phobos or other stunning heroes to, to take down bosses. Uh, another good option would be copying uh, Martha to get um, even more speed up. Lots of great options to copy with Faceless, both damaging skills and utility skills. Very, very strong ability. Probably one of the most unique in the game. All right, next we have Power Throw. Power Throw, the green ability, raises the nearest enemy above the ground and then drops them at the center of the enemy team, deals damage, and stuns all enemies in the effective range for two seconds. So Power Throw will reset your team position. It will reset the enemy team position as well. Uh, very effective at exposing that second hero in line. If your enemy's second hero is a squishy hero, like a Kira, maybe... Um, I don't know, like a Satori, this will do very well in exposing that hero to your attackers. It also pairs very well with Kark's knock-up tendrils ability, like I mentioned earlier. Very, very strong team combo in that regard. But this, this is just an all-around good utility. It's really strong against some campaign enemies, not so strong against bosses, but the stun is fantastic. The, you know, exposing that second line hero, 
extremely you know extremely potent depending on your team setup very strong skill we have chain lightning and this is just a three enemy area of effect it lowers their physical attack for a few seconds it does a little bit of damage at 30 percent magic attack modifier but it's nice in that it doesn't necessarily target a high health enemy or a low health enemy. This just fires it off, usually hitting the first three enemies on the opponent's team and lowers their physical attack. Great against physical attacking teams, obviously. Uh, enemy Kira's, enemy Ching Mao's, enemy Karks in that front line. Uh, this will help lower their overall damage output. And then finally, uh, Faceless has passive ability, Spell Expert. This will increase your entire team's magic defense by a flat amount. Doesn't activate based on any other skill. This is just active 100% of the time. And it's this skill. Well, this is this is one of the skills that allows Kark teams overall to be more effective against mages than they are against physical attacking teams. So nice, safe ability to have. Very strong ability in campaign, in boss fights like in Outland or in the tower. Good hero all around. Nice set of skills, very solid set of skills. Let's talk about his skins, of which he has four on Facebook and three on mobile as of the recording of this video, but he will get that fourth skill. So default skin is intelligence. Then you have his stellar skin, which is magic attack. You have masquerade skin, which is health. And then you have his um, his solar skin, which is available now on Facebook, but not on mobile. And this is also magic attack. So you have two magic attack skins, a health skin, and then of course his intelligence skin. I would level up the magic attack skins second, depending on what team you're in. So if you're building a Kark team, and you're using Faceless in that Kark team, then you want to go for the Masquerade skin first, health first. If you're not building a Kark team, and the reason why I say that is because, again, Kark's ultimate ability that you're trying to copy doesn't have any damage component of its own. So it doesn't matter how much attack or physical attack or magic attack or any of that. It doesn't matter. Build health first. If you're not trying to build a Kark team, maybe you're trying to put it in this new Aurora team that you know we've we've kind of seen a couple of times, purely magic attack, then in this case, you want to level up that solar skin first, that solar skin or the stellar skin, plus magic attack will help out Faceless's other skills, it'll help out copying, um, you know, the other magical damage skills on your team, and the solar skin looks amazing, this is, this is one of my top three, top five skins in the game now, it's, it just looks so good, it just looks so good, so <clears throat> health or magic attack, depending on your team setup, Usually health, usually health. And then finally, intelligence last. All right, hopefully hopefully, you mobile users will get the solar skin by the time this video goes live or uh, sometime in the next month or so. Glyph order. Um, faceless, similar to what I mentioned earlier, you kind of want to build the glyphs based on the heroes in your, in your team. If you're building a Kark team, then I would say health first. If you're not building a Kark team, then maybe you want to build magic penetration with, uh, you know, magic attack first. If you're trying to copy another physical damage dealer on your team, maybe you want to build, maybe you want to build up physical attack first and then health. Generally speaking, this guy being a support hero, you want to start with his health, but he still does have a lot of magical component, magical damage to him. So uh, be mindful of who you're trying to duplicate, what skills you're trying to duplicate, and level up that glyph first. In the case of Kark, I would level up the physical attack glyph absolutely last because Kark's ability, again, doesn't require any physical attack or penetration or anything. Therefore, a physical attack glyph will not help at all with Faceless's ultimate. Won't help with, with Faceless at all. Well, aside from his just basic auto attacks. So in that case, you really want to be extremely mindful, maybe more than any other hero in the game. You want to really think about glyph order, do some research on what your heroes do, what you're trying to duplicate with that doppelganger skill, and level them up that way. But a good rule of thumb is health, and then your uh, your magic penetration, and then your magic attack, physical attack, uh, and then intelligence. Um, so who knows? <laughs> who knows what setup that you need? As far as artifacts are concerned, he is one of the few heroes that provides magic penetration to your team. If you're using Orion elsewhere, Orion providing magic penetration, Faceless is a good option to provide magic pen for your team. Throw him on with uh, Lars Krista. Throw him in with, you know, the Aurora damage dealing team. Throw him in, you know, really anywhere that you want mag more magic penetration. Since this guy is not 
technically a damage dealer. I think if it were me starting over, I would focus a lot on his Ring of Intelligence. Uh, getting that Hermit's Shroud artifact weapon to three star will be beneficial, especially if you're in a magic attack team. However, neither that artifact weapon nor that book will really help you a ton if Faceless is in a Kark team. And that's kind of the, the team that Faceless is the most well-known. So let me say that again. If you're, if you're using Faceless and Kark together, the book and the artifact weapon aren't going to help out as much as leveling up another hero's artifact. Now, this is completely different if you're using the Helios variant. If you've got Helios behind, uh, behind your uh, Kai or uh, in the back, Helios needs magic penetration. And if you are, then focus a little bit more on that artifact weapon. Just something to think about. Again, depending on the team you're trying to build, the order that you level up these artifacts are going to vary greatly. So this hero, being one of the most utility heroes in the game, you can literally pop him into any team, uh, physical attacking team, defensive team, magic crit, just about any team. Uh, I would I would say it's a pretty safe guess uh, that it's water bottle tier. So faceless... Faceless is one of the few heroes that I, I feel is a water bottle tier hero. He has no trouble slotting into just about any team as a support, whether it's to expose an enemy's second line, whether it's to duplicate an ability in a campaign, or maybe duplicate a specific um, attacking uh, ultimate, be it Karks or Orions or anybody else. Uh, faceless water bottle tier for sure. As far as ways to counter faceless, I'm not sure that I would go out of the way to counter faceless specifically. Whatever hero that faceless is trying to support, be it Kark or another damage dealer, um, that is the hero. That is the hero that I would work on countering. Whatever whatever enemy hero that faceless is trying to support, that's that's going to be your focus. Uh, it is worth mentioning to never use Luther with. Faceless as <laughs> Faceless copies Luther's jump, Luther teleports, I'm uh, sorry, Faceless teleports to the enemy, uh, enemy middle of team, and he just gets shredded because he doesn't have any tanking stats. So worth mentioning there. Thank you, Arcana, for that uh, little note. <laughs> we, uh, we've already done a ton of team videos with Faceless. Maybe maybe we can do a couple of more. Uh, maybe somebody comes up with some new things. Let me know in the comment section down below if you have an alternative team uh, that uses Faceless aside from the Kark team or aside from a, an, an Orion, I'm sorry, Aurora control setup that we've already we have already talked about a couple of times. Um, overall, I love Faceless. I think he's, he's completely random. I think he's underestimated. I, I think that he's a lot of fun. And, you know, that's what this game is about. That's what any game should be about is having fun. I, uh, I hope you guys enjoy these videos I have on screen now discussing faceless comboing with Kark and that uh, that Aurora faceless team that I keep mentioning. Uh, check those videos out if you'd like. If not, that's cool, too. If you found this video helpful, please consider leaving a like. Uh, consider subscribing. I love you all. Good luck in Dominion.